so. Let's see. Nicholas Cades. All I need to do is that put vampire after that. You know what? It really does look like him. Thanatos archive. It's possible, but well, I do think he would be able to get that. Well, actually, he would be able to get that all with makeup. He is a legend, but he is also kind of a hack. <sighs> but seriously, this pixel looks too much like both him and Toby Maguire, and basically too much like Tobin Maguire. He online. Let's see. Let's do it. Ah, shit. Okay, let's see. It's loading. It's loading. Or maybe wait. Well, let's see. If you ask the antique door who was auctioning off a Civil War era photograph photo photograph on eBay of a man from Bristol, Tennessee, bearing an airy tem resemblance to the Oscar one more. The, an the answer is more. Is it ever a good idea to trespass on Nicolas Cage? So true. If you ever believe such bedtime stories, that is. And I do. Personally, I believe it's him, and that it that he is some sort of walking undead vampire, etc. Who quickens, slash reinvents himself every, once every seventy-five years or so. Right, it's a seller. Zach Mord, who is also asking a whopping one million dollars as a starting bid for this pick. This is way back when, so who knows if it actually sold. 
that for that much. 150 years from now, he might be a politician, the leader of a cult, or a talk show host, or maybe a cryptologist, come treasure hunter, or vigilante hell's angel. In fact, the collector revealed the antique memorial photo is a portrait of Lieutenant T.B. Smith. A Confederate prisoner who was taken in 1864 at Johnson's Island prison camp on in Ohio. Ohio. So it's not Edward Cullen material, but we'll assume the resemblance is startling. We'll admit the the semblance is startling. But something tells us the 2011 Cades is aging too quickly to be a modern day Lestat. Though that didn't stop Maud from humorless, humorously speculating in the Q&A portion of the listing about the thespians purported Transylvanian's roots before he removed the auction from unexplained for unexplained reasons. My theory is that he allows himself to age at a certain point, maybe 70, 80 or so. Then the actor Nicholas Cage will die, but in reality, the undead vampire Nicholas Cage will have rejuvenated himself and appeared in some other part of the world, young again and ready to start over. Writes the dealer. From time to time, somebody might mentioned to him that he bears a slight resemblance to the young version of the dead American actor whose name they can't recall but eventually those occurrences will stop altogether. We'll let you, we'll let you be the judge as to whether Cage's verbal doppelganger means vampires really exist. Eat your heart out, Tom Cruise. <laughs> so, while this is an old subject, it's just still interesting, to me at least. He looks like my fucking enemy of the public who is known as Scott. He let himself go really bad. I've seen pictures of him before. The whole bullshit. That happened between him and my mom. But then. You think about it. And then you look at him now, how old he looks, and you just don't believe it.
that is still a possibility. I believe. Wow. And it even goes this far. As to say there was not just one person who looks like an old painting. But John Travolta, Christian Bale, Sylvester Stallone really looks like that old painting. Fifteen thirty. Tom, not Tom, Keanu Reeves. He looks like he might be a fucking vampire. And then there's Matthew McConaughey. Which brings to mind the whole thought. I had this whole idea for a movie called Vampire Hollywood. And then there was Joseph Gordon Levitt. Why no women? Maybe they don't want to be known. Maybe the women want to just be treated as human beings. Because they know damn well how different people react to different types of people from the past. If you ask me, Ellen Page she is more than likely at least a werewolf. <laughs> I mean, Canadian werewolf thing, think about it. A lot of werewolf creature features are said in Canada. <laughs> Maybe that's not so, but it seems to me like some of them are at least ginger snaps fucking ginger snaps but I don't believe in that kind of werewolf I don't think they would torn permanently I think they would I, I mean, maybe they would, but they would at least be able to stop it for as long as possible, as long as they didn't get put into something like a mental institution like Bridget did. <laughs> Unfortunately for Ginger, She didn't know about the cure. <sighs> well, this is enlightening.
what if Let's see this. I think the best ideal to get from Canadian werewolves is Cinder Snaps one and two and Bitten. I mean, it's too depressing that only one person can play the female werewolf in a series. But, therein lies a simple fact. She is the only female Werewolf on TV. But she doesn't have to be. There can be not only one, there can be multiple. I think. And I had this idea for a long time that I could make Ellen Page into the most convincing werewolf you've ever seen for a movie. But there's only one thing about that. It can't be a real scary movie. It can't be like an American Werewolf from London. It's got to be more like along the lines of the uh, the Howling or something. Probably more like Bitten. Bitten is not scary, per se. Uh, 
I mean, it could be freaky to imagine yourself turning into a werewolf. But there lies the trick. Don't make it creepy for the actress. Make it creepy for the public. Either that, or don't make it creepy at all. Just a little weird. I know a way this can work. You can get prosthetics. Um, the fake tail, that would obviously be a prosthetic, but whatever. You can't make it look as fake as Central Snaps 1. Well, that was okay. Better things have been done with the genre than that. In fact, here's my number one way to turn an actress into a werewolf and not do it as quadrupedal. Well, I'm stumped, Ellie. Really, it's kind of hard to think of it, but just imagine this: the tail grows fast; it stays there for the entire movie. My idea was originally to. make it a freaking werewolf meets the strangers type thing but that wouldn't work because Ellen Page is fucking terrified of horror films either that or she just doesn't like them and claims that she is freaking terrified of them. I mean, it's obvious that... Oh, I changed my voice, sorry. It's obvious that you have to walk on the snout movements, walk on the ear movements. You have to make it the most detailed werewolf scene that isn't scary. Make the fur grow visibly, not like an American werewolf in London, not that that didn't do great. I mean, seriously. Think about how you're going to do this. How are you going to have the tail grow first when they're still human? Or are you going to have Free reign on the ideas and have your own sort of transformation.
Well, first of all, Alan Page wants something that's not too scary. That's something that I would have to do. Either that or have a play of vampire, who is also a werewolf. A werewolf vampire hybrid. Make the teeth grow bigger than the average werewolf. And make the fur completely white. Because Pale, white, pretty much go together pretty damn well. Anyway, all vampires have to be light shades if they're also a werewolf. Because, think about it. I don't think she'd mind being in something like Underworld just to remove that gothic crap and add a fully animatronic tail. Then add, sorry, um, paws growing. How about this for something original? The hand stays the same size. It doesn't stretch out. I mean. I don't know why, but I always find myself. Um, I find myself looking at my hand. It's like I'm high. And well, I do take an awful lot of medicine. And as if that's not enough, I try to, whenever I can, drink some beer. See, I see my hand blowing besides the wanting to look at them so much I guess that's the side effect of the meds but there's no reason to hate someone who takes meds they have to take the meds like I said All meds can cause weird things like that. They can also help. Like, um, I don't know. Like, <coughs> I'm the forget. Medication. Reacts into well, everything.
I know I shouldn't stop in the middle of something, but I can't help it. It's the medicine. Like I said. No one wants to look at a video where you are always pausing. But therein lies the question. Can you stop yourself from pausing if your voice is roaring out? Well, can you? Anyway, if anyone in this world is a vampire, let that shit be known. Because you are the same beautiful you that has always existed in this earth. I'm sure, I'm sure that if freaking Let me think. I'm sure. <laughs> Here's a nice thing. Abigail, Ada. Adriana, these are all vampire names for girls. Eleron, Akasha, <laughs> Alexandra, Amelia, Amelia, Amber, Anna. Angelica, Angelina, Antoinette, Aurelia, Aurora, Aurora. I'm not going to name all these, so forget about that. But there are some that just strike me as awesome. Gabrielle, Gabriella, Genevieve, Jacqueline, Lydia, Marta, Ruby. Tabitha Winifred Vampire Names for Boys No Top Ten Vampire Females Camilla Short Sauce, Camilla by Saradin Le Fanu. Date, 1872. Wow. Queen of Blood is a film from 1966. Vampirella. Comics, date, 1969. Elizabeth Nuttershane. Countess Dracula, Marion Baylock, The Hunger, Akasha, The Queen of the Damned, Dark Dance, Ruth Scarab Bay, Jeanette Ducharme, TV series for everyone at night, Jusula, Buffy the Vampire Sailor. 
and Selene from Underworld. I guess I've probably overstayed my welcome by now. Just remember, think always of your actor that you want to play it, whether they're Nicolas Cage or Ellen Page. And make the transformation worthwhile, like the original American Werewolf in London, but with added features such as no elongated hands, just elongating. Uh, arms. And, of course, with the floor, you gotta make sure it's showing going. Actually, I think I do remember American Wolf in London doing that. <laughs> I just remember that. That's something. <laughs>